This is my really good friend, Monica. Hi. She actually was my neighbor. We grew up down the street from each other in like middle school, right? Yes. Yeah, I was in middle school. We were both in middle school. I was in sixth grade. You were in eighth? Eighth. Yeah. So we've known each other for a good minute and she's from El Salvador. And I knew she came he here to the States when she was younger, but I never really knew her whole story. So it's interesting. We were talking about this. We were talking about her story earlier, and she actually knows the exact date she came to the States. What day did you come to? It was August 6, 2002. 2002. And the fact that she knows the exact date is pretty crazy to me. <laughs> and then she told me um, something else that was crazy. She said that school started when? August 10th. August 10th. 2002, so I had four days. If you had, she had only had four days. How old were you whenever you moved here? I was nine years old. Nine years old, so you were in? In El Salvador, I was in third grade. So over there, it works like school works from January to October. Mm -hmm. So I came here August, so I was like halfway through the school year, mm -hmm. almost the whole way. Mm -hmm. So whenever I came here with my family, with my mom, my dad, and my sister, uh, my mom enrolled me in classes, and this was like August 8th, so it was two days right before mm -hmm. school started. And I remember her, like the people telling her, well, she's really supposed to go to fourth grade, but the last grade that has bilingual classes is third grade. Mm -hmm. So my mom decided to hold me back a year, and I was, so I came here and I guess repeated all of third grade again. So when they when you were so for fourth grade there wasn't bilingual classes no it was like you would go straight to like all english classes Gosh. and i knew maybe like good morning uh, in english good afternoon. you just knew good morning and yeah good like good, like stuff yeah. like that like even like can i go to the bathroom i remember like practicing the day before uh -huh. like again again just in case <laughs> i had to go to the bathroom so you told me that whenever that you had visited the states before but you would just come to visit right and when you moved here you thought that you were just coming to visit again huh well we in my head i was like i don't think i realized that it was like for long term in a sense mm -hmm. or even if i did realize it was long term it was more of a well, you're going to go there and mm -hmm. get established mm -hmm. and just, you know, have a little vacation for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I came here and then four days later, like I was starting school, like that to me was just like. Did you, did you understand when your mom was enrolling you and y'all went through the whole process? Did you understand why you had at that time? Did you understand why you had to go back and repeat their grade? Like, did you understand that there was a language barrier? And that that was going to be one more thing you would have to, like, overcome when learning new material as, like, a child? Um, I guess I did understand it, just, and, I mean, I didn't think it was a big deal that I was repeating third grade until I went to third grade. And you understood, like, the curriculum? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, in my head, I was like, oh, you know, it's going to be the same, and everything's going to be fine, and it was, like, mostly Spanish in the bilingual class and mm -hmm. I would get taken out of class to learn English mm -hmm. but math was completely different like I, in El Salvador I was already learning like multiplication like 20 times 14 type stuff mm -hmm. and over here they were like learning maybe the mm -hmm. nine times one type of table mm -hmm. so it was just like I was bored a lot of the time really yeah Okay, so you mentioned that you would get taken out of class to go see, I would imagine, like, a speech pathologist. Right, so yeah. I would, it was me and this other girl that were in the class, we would just get taken out, I'm thinking it was, like, two hours, I honestly couldn't tell you, and we would just go with this different lady that would just, like, we would just practice, like, index cards, like, of words, like, I remember Ambulance was, like, one of them, and she mm. would, like, she would even, like, uh, teaches like idioms like hold your horses type thing because uh -huh. I remember her saying that one and I'm like I don't get it like what what is hold, hold your, your horses horse. like but have she's to trying do to with, teach like, you little... with like slow down like I didn't understand uh -huh. what what the relation was in a sense uh -huh. and even to this day like anyone can tell you I like mix, mix like Spanish idioms and English idioms up. all the time yeah like I just like I say them and they're like I don't know what you're saying like mm -hmm. So when you, so in third grade, you were in bilingual. Do you remember your fourth and fifth grade experience? Like, do you feel like that helped you getting pulled out and having like oh, extra 100%, resources? Oh, yeah. yeah. So going to, yeah, I think 
if a student comes into class like not knowing anything mm -hmm. like English related they should definitely be taken out of class even if it's like fourth or fifth grade or they're not in a bilingual class but yeah it helped me because I remember six months into like being in class I was already like reading in English yeah yeah and, and that maybe speaking it was a lot harder but I could read because I took the tax test in in English really yeah did you have someone there like reading the questions for you even no though, no you no. did it by yourself mm -hmm. I don't know and the math cool. one was like super easy like I flew by but like uh -huh. I remember the the reading one I guess would be I, I took like you know how they took you out of class after like noon uh -huh. to go to like do extra time to yeah. take the test so it took me like all day but I did it in English and I was like heck yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're proud of yourself yeah. I cannot okay so now obviously you're older and you went through like the school systems you went through right. so this is elementary school so you did middle school and high school but you knew English you said by like six months you feel like you've like mastered it for the most part Oh, I mean, yeah, as good as it could, get. as good as yeah. it could get to understand the curriculum right. being taught to you. So you're 25 now, and did you go to college? I did. Where did you go to college? Uh, Texas A&M. Uh huh. What'd Fighting you? Texas Aggie, oh, class yeah. of 2016. You want to do a little whoop? Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure U of H won't appreciate it, but um, what did you study? Uh, chemical engineering. Do you feel like? Everything that you did in elementary school, like the resources that you had, the accommodations you had, helped you still go to college, still get your education and further, like, your knowledge and get your degree and be who you are today? I believe it did. I think if I wouldn't have had that extra help, especially with um, being taken out of class and learning English, mm -hmm. I probably would have been a lot more behind than I was. Mm -hmm. And even, like, I remember in fourth grade... Um, is whenever I got into the gifted and talented classes, mm -hmm. but I couldn't go full on to the gifted and talented class because one of the teacher wasn't ESL cer certified, so I had to be in a different class for English and social studies and reading, which is, and then the math and the science I would go to the gifted and talented class, mm -hmm. and even then because I started in in the ESL class and mm -hmm. I felt like that was holding me back in a sense mm -hmm. and then once I was able to switch out like I felt like that's where I belonged yeah and not being like held behind and having all those resources early on I think like helped me like know that I can do anything yeah you know what I mean I think it's cool yeah yeah because sure. I can't even imagine learning a second language why not I don't know was it harder I learning English I or Spanish I mean, I don't remember learning Spanish. You don't remember Spanish. Spanish. But yeah, do you think but, learning English was hard? Um, was it I don't think so because you're so like submerged. You were around English. it so yeah, much. Like, I think if you're learning English in a different speaking yeah. country, yeah. then it would be hard. Did your par This is random. Did your parents know English when they came here? So in? my dad didn't know like enough, and then my mom took classes right before coming here. Yeah. So at home, were y'all speaking English? No. At home, it's like Spanish. So you would go to school, and they're like trying to teach you English, and right. like classes are in English, and all the little kids around you are speaking English, and then you went back home. Did you feel like more comfortable at home? Because you were like, did you ever feel uncomfortable? At the beginning? Yeah. Did you ever feel uncomfortable at school? Oh, like, 100%. Yeah? Yeah, because, everyone because, else... because everybody else spoke English, and so my communication skills were like cut off in a yeah. sense, unless I was speaking to peop other people that spoke Spanish. Like, I remember riding the bus, and there was, like, no one that spoke Spanish. How would you get to the bus? Did they help you get to the bus? Like, that sounds probably like a dumb question, but, like... Well, yeah, like, the teacher, like, explained to me, like, okay, you have a sticker, this is the bus, you, we go... And, like, the teachers will walk you around the bus yeah. and be like, okay, this is your bus. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know, I never rode a bus to school in El Salvador. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay, last question I have, really random. Okay. I don't know if I'm put this in the video, but do you think the curriculum in El Salvador was better than is better than the curriculum here? Like what you learned in El Salvador, do you think like it challenged you more than when you came here? Like honestly, like from what you can remember, obviously. Um, that's hard to say though. I think over there they like are more advanced. 
advance in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Because like I said, in third grade, I was already doing like harm multiplication and division. And over here, I remember in fifth grade doing that. I just found that crazy that you already knew all that stuff, but you had to be held back right. to be in the bilingual class. Right. That's crazy. But over here, I think they have like better resources than they do back yeah. in Salvador. Yeah, I can see that. Like, if someone from the States moved to El Salvador right. and they only knew English, they would just be like, well, what do we do with you? Yeah, exactly. Kind of thing. Does yeah. that make sense? In El Salvador, yeah. like, all you do was take notes. Like, yeah. you, you know how college is? Yeah. That's how, like... Really? <laughs> yeah, like, they, like, write on the board and, and you just write it? on your notes. Yeah. So whenever you went to school and they were doing, like, all these fun things <laughs> well, like, with, like, centers yeah, and exactly. tubs and, like, <laughs> like manipulative, yeah. manipulatives, you were yeah. just like, this is fun. Yeah, like, vlogs, okay. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. And over there, like, you have, like, a lot of homework. And over here, I remember you would have, like, a week-long homework, and they would give it to you, and I would be done by, like, Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah. We're doing the interview. For sure. Now. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>